Today I'm going to be doing a flavor build that is the Waterbender. A little bit while back we did the Earthbender, so it's only appropriate that we do the other ones when the opportunity arises. So I'm going to be a Triton right off the bat. We don't have to be a Triton, we can just take the Triton stats and then flavor it however we want, but I'm a Triton. Tritons give us spells that fit our flavor, they give us resistance to cold damage, and they let us breathe underwater, so they do a lot of things that a Waterbender would innately be able to do, so that's nice. We're going with a plus one, plus one, plus one stat array. We're going into Constitution, Dex, and Charisma, and we're dumping the rest. At level one, we're going into the Dr Draconic Ancestry Sorcerer. We're going to be some form of the Cold Dragon flavor, so white or silver. This gives us, right off the bat, a solid AC bonus and a solid health bonus, just making us a lot more tanky than most, most sorcerers are, which is nice. As for our cantrips, in combat, our go-to is going to be Ray of Frost, and for utility, our go-to is going to be Control Water. The rest of the cantrips are honestly pretty flexible, and just flavor them the way you see fit. So like Mage Hand would be this shimmering water hand, and Minor Illusion might be you refract light using your water to create illusions. Just kind of flavor it the way you want to. That's probably the, the four cantrips I'd go with to start. The first level spells I'm looking at are Ice Knife, Chromatic Orb. Those two have a lot of redundancy and kind of do the same thing in two different ways, but also Fog Cloud and Shield. And we could imagine Shield as being a Water Shield as opposed to a normal like Arcane Shield. At level two, we start getting our Sorcery Points, but we, we don't really have our Meta Magic until next level. So all we're going to do is transfer them over to Spell Slots. At level three, we get our Meta Magic. I'm going to be taking Quickened here because we're going to have some interesting combat those come up later, which we'll get into when we get to them. I'm also going to be taking careful spell because a lot of cold spells do an AOE, they do damage, and then if they fail the save, they take this extra effect. So we just save our allies from taking that extra effect as well as taking half damage. Like Rhyme's Binding Frost, for example, which is a spell we get at this level and is going to be a go-to spell for us. It's actually a very powerful water or ice-based spell, and it goes perfectly with careful spell because we're making them use their actions to break the ice on them, and our allies just aren't going to have to deal with that. So we are already having synergy there. Other considerations that are gonna be within theme in the second level spells are Dragon's Breath, Hold Person, cause it's like we put water around them and then we freeze it, kinda cool. Snowball Swarm, and then others can be flavored with ice or water flavor easy enough, like Maximilian's Earth and Grasp can become Ice Grasp or Water Grasp. And Web is another example of water that can freeze and restrain people. So yeah, I would be looking at spells that even if they're not in theme, we can kind of make into the theme. At level four, I'm getting a Charisma Bump and at level five, we are going to get our third level spells and here are the considerations for our flavor. I really love slow in particular with this build. It's a great fight winning spell and it's perfectly in theme that we can create this mist that just hinders movement because it's continually frosting over type thing. Other spells include sleet storm, water breathing, tidal wave, and water wall. And we actually need to talk about water wall because before I mentioned quickened being used for combinations and that really begins with water wall. So more often than not, water wall is actually kind of a bad spell. Spell. But with Quickened Ray of Frost, for example, we can put the water wall directly on an enemy. You can create it where an enemy is, and then we fire a Ray of Frost through as much of the water wall as we can, which is going to freeze every section of water wall we hit with that Ray of Frost, including the one they're in. So this is very DM dependent, but they're in the water that freezes, so it's going to freeze with them in it. So it should have some form of restraining included in the damage. And now we also created cover. So it does a lot of different things when we do this combination all at once, so it's quite flexible in how we use it. So every DM is going to handle this differently. Personally, I would do a deck save for them to escape before it freezes. On a failure, they are restrained until the area around the wall is either broken or they use their action to make a strength saving throw to break out against our spell save DC. There is precedence for doing it exactly this way because in later levels we pick up Freezing Sphere and its mechanics are very similar to this. So that's why I took it from there, put it over here, and then just gave the extra benefit that an enemy could attack the ice and break their ally out. So it's a little easier to escape. This same combo though can be used to completely freeze a hallway because you create the water wall, use your Ray of Frost to do several five foot blocks that are freezing throughout this hallway. And then, you know, next turn you can Ray of Frost the, the top layer and then do a 10 foot tall ice wall. So it can be used in niche situations to create more of a stone wall than it is a water wall. I'm not going to say this is a super great combination, but it is unique and something that gives this character a, a unique fill with their flavor and kind of some spice to the mechanics that they're using. At level six, we now add our charisma modifier to every form of cold damage that we do once per cast. And since we're doing a ton of cold damage, this is just a good boost in our damage. The 
bigger an AOE attack we use, the more damage this is going to increase it by because we're hitting more enemies with the same boost. At level seven, we're picking up our fourth level spells. As for our level four spells, we don't really have many that stand out. Watery Sphere is a really big standout for me. And if your DM's cool, they'll let you use your ice combination with your water in the Watery Sphere to, to create restrained effects as well. But Ice Storm is another one that does stand out. At level eight, I'm doing a Charisma Bump. And at level nine, I'm picking up Summon Draconic Spirit. And it's definitely going to be, you know, a white or silver dragon that is appearing. We can summon Cryobane. I just think that's badass. We can have Cryobane as our ally. Sick. As for our other spells, Cone of Cold and Hold Monster stand out. If you stretch Wall of Stone, could become Wall of Ice. And now we don't have to be doing any gimmicky, fancy stuff. We can just do a Wall of Ice now. Bigsby's Hand, similar to the Mage Hand, can be a hand created of water. At level 10, I'll grab our Transmutation Meta Magic so that if there's someone who is resistant to cold damage, we can still do something. I'd probably choose something like Force Damage to not go too far out of theme from what we're trying to do. At level 11, we here I'm looking at Freezing Sphere as a big standout for what we're doing. Investiture of Ice fits, but it's kind of garbage. Flesh to Stone can become Flesh to Ice, and Globe of Invulnerability can be made of water or ice. I particularly like the Flesh to Stone becoming Flesh to Ice. I just think it's kind of cool that we're changing someone into an ice sculpture. So how do we do? At the end of the day, we are essentially a sorcerer with limitations. So we should be weaker than a base sorcerer, and I'd say that's fair, but we're certainly not terrible. We do get our control spells, we get some blasts, we get a summon, we get solid fight winning spells like slow. Slow is going to carry us a long way. So we are still powerful. And the main thing about this is just to really enjoy the flavor of being a waterbender and see how creative we can get with combinations of water and ice. And I think cool DMs are going to allow us to do a lot of cool things because we can paint the ground in water and then quickly freeze it to create difficult terrain like that type of creative play. I think this build really allows for a lot of it, the combination of water and freezing that water. You can do a lot of cool combinations if your DM is willing. I think this is a pretty fun build, but what I want to hear from you is how you would build your waterbender. Let me know in the comments down below. But other than that, I hope you have yourselves a lovely day and I'll see you on the next one. Later.